I was born in Tucson, I, and my parents were going to University of Arizona. Uh, my dad finished his uh, um, uh, he got two bachelors from University of Arizona, and then mo- we moved to Washington D.C. So uh, dad went to GW for his master's. When he finished his education, I was about uh, uh, I was young, seven eight years old, and and my parents decided to move back to Iran. Yes, because my grandfather's uh, wish for my dad was to. You know, educate himself, uh, you know, in the Western world, and then come back and serve his country. So, so he he wanted to make his dad pr- proud. At the time, my grandfather had passed away, but my my father, you know, wanted to do this, and so we moved back to Iran. But hang on a second. The, before, you Iran, before you go to yeah. Iran, before you go to Iran, you're 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 a kid in Tucson, in D.C. Basically, you said six year old, yes, seven year old. Yes, yes. Do you are you? An American kid? How how do you see yourself at that point? Very very American. I mean, I didn't speak a word of Farsi. Um, you know, I, I we grew up and we spoke English in the house, just like every other kid. You know, is born here, and and now we moved to Iran after the revolution. While everybody was right. escaping Iran, right. we were on a plane. We we're on a plane to ourselves. I'm assuming going to Iran. <laughs> right. Right. Like, it is an extraordinary sure? inverse trajectory of most <laughs> exactly. families. Yeah, you're, you're, we, we land into airport and they go, "Are you sure you 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 know you want to come in?" And we're like, "Yes, yes. We, we are very sure. We are absolutely out of our minds. We uh, we can't find a better, worse situation." So wait a number. second. Wait a second. Yeah. Your dad, uh, your Esfahani dad, your mom is Azeri. By the way, so yes. is my mom is as well. So we've got that in common. Oh, beautiful, so, beautiful. So, so you, your dad says to your mom, I've got to honor my dad, uh, my grandfather. I've got to do, go do the. There's no pushback. There's no, honey, do you think this is the best time? There's a war. Uh, how, how simple was that decision for your parents? I think they were so naive to what they were doing. And and look, this is so early on. Like I don't, I don't, I, I really. I mean, obviously, I was a kid. My mom wasn't fonded of the idea, but my dad was extremely passionate, and he was a, he loved his country, and he thought he he can do so much for the country, and he's going to go come back. And I don't know if they thought. I don't know, honestly. So where did you go? You, Tehran? Tehran, and we, we started, you know, they put us in school, and we were a little behind because, uh, you know, we didn't speak Farsi, and they put us in school, and, and I was, you know, the dumbest kid in school. Well, I, I mean, how yes, does, <laughs> this is the golden question, I mean, how does young American Max deal with being thrown into this situation in, in post-revolutionary Iran as a seven, eight-year-old? You just, you don't, you know, we didn't know any better. We just, <clears throat> our parents didn't know any better. I remember my mom had a really hard time adjusting um, because my mom grew up in London from age of 13. She was in boarding school at age 13. So she, she didn't, she was a, it was a culture shock for her. I remember my, you know, my grandparents loved it. Her parents were so happy that we were all there. The family, you know, the, the, what's beautiful about Iranian culture is the family. They're all around you. They're, yeah. you know, so all of that was wonderful. Um, you know, and, 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 and you just, you just, I, I don't know, but you just figure, like, I remember being in school and uh, they would line us up and, you know, before, before you go to class, it's like a military thing. Like everybody lines up and they, they you know, they, they have these, they, they, they scream death to America uh, death to Iraq. It was it was a the war kids between do? Iran and Iraq. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. just like a military yeah. death to America. And I, and I remember standing in that line in Farsi. The, all the kids say death to America. And I'm like, I was born. I'm American. So I went home and I told my mom, Mom, they, they're saying death to America, but well, I'm, I can't say death to America. And my mom said, "Yeah, don't say it. Just, just mouth it. So they, you know they think you're saying." What did my mom I mean, know? So, so one doesn't like, know whether to laugh or cry, of course. But th- <laughs> yeah, that's horrible. Was, so, yeah, so it, what did the other kids make of you? Did you? I mean, were you? I got bullied a lot. I really did. I got bullied a lot because I looked privileged. I didn't look belong to the to the thing. I and, and I'm telling you, my Farsi wasn't good. So I'm sitting in class. I can't understand what the teacher was fully saying. It took me a, 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 almost a year to get to to if just get that language barrier out of the way, and then I kind of started like maybe making a few friends here and there. But it was 
tough. I, I honestly remember, all the way t- till age nine, nine or so, it was really hard for me to fit in. I had very few friends, and the friends were like friends of the family type of thing. And and so the first couple of years was really tough. But then, you know, you, you just, you get your kid, and you, you know, you figure it out, and and uh, you know, you just. I mean, you know, the, the, the cliche, by. the cliche question to ask a comedian is, uh, "Were you funny when you were six years old?" I mean, I, I, I don't even know if you would have. The, you're not exactly was, in the conditions where you could be I like was. a rabbi walks into a bar. <laughs> like no, but, but I tell you what, I was crazy. I was a nutcase. Okay. And, and, and to this day, the whole family, you know, when they tell me the stupid shit I did when I was, you know, <laughs> a six year old in Iran, like I, I would take a kubi day and go to. I mean, the stuff I've done it was so out. What would you do with the kubida? What what were you going to say? Yeah, I I would take a kubida. My cousins were telling me these stories. And and, you know when they put the sikh in the (laughs) kubida, there's a hole in the middle. So apparently I would take the kubida in front of the whole family and I had this obsession with turning it into a telescope and go, oh, I can see through the kubida. So I would have the the kid wouldn't stop taking the kubida and like looking through the kubida and everybody goes, oh, I can see you through it. So I was just obnoxious and, and, and uh, you know, so, <laughs> but, so you know. You, but, um, so you didn't hate the, those first couple of years in your own? You, you somehow, I mean, you had the family love, but it's really tough for a kid. I mean, I can't, if, I think it if, was, for, if it, it were really me, tough. I'd be looking at my parents going, what did you, where did you bring me? I want, you know, I was doing so well back in DC, uh, or, you know, I mean, I had the opposite experience growing up in, in England and being a, you know, a kid who was very Iranian and, and sort of wondering why I didn't fit in there. But, but this, this is uh, extraordinary. You get thrown into the yes, situation. It, so it's interesting you say that because no, I never, I, I didn't grow up in that privileged uh, scenario to tell my parents, why did you bring me here? Let me tell you something. My parents were going through hell. And I think that's why we never thought about ourselves as kids, like me or my sisters. We never, you know, my, my parents had a, uh, a, a very complicated marriage. They were uh, not in a good place. We were in a new country. There was so much happening. I don't think as kids we uh, I, we even had like when I, I'm listening to what you're saying. No, I didn't didn't have this thing like oh mommy why you brought me here. No, mommy was going through hell. Mm. And and as a, and as a son, I would see how my mom is having a hard time. And I, I just think we we were on autopilot, just getting up and dealing with the situation, going to school and dealing with it. I. I, in school, I didn't have a support system. Back then, they would hit the kids. Uh, teachers would hit the kids uh, in school. I remember uh, all the time getting punished because I either um, was dropped off late to school or I didn't um, you know, understand what the teacher was teaching. And you know, they would just slap you or hit you with a stick. Or something. It was just, literally sounds like a, you know, barbarian times, yeah, but yeah. really it was. Uh, and, and I'm telling you, it was a very brutal time of my life, uh, the, the first two or three years. And then it, it's kind of, it, it, things kind of shifted because you get used to things. You just accept things. Humans have this magnificent power to accept things. And, and I just, it became norm. And that's when I came to my senses. I started having more of a personality I started fighting back with the bullies. I started uh, making more friends, playing sports, playing soccer, playing volleyball, playing basketball. And then I just, you know, at some point, I, you know, I became the tough kid myself. Mm. Believe it or not, you know, I stood up for myself. I got into a lot of fights. You know, we, there was a lot of fights after school. And, and eventually I learned to stand up for myself. And, and that's when things shifted and I became the alpha. 